Hello, welcome. Uh, we're gonna give everyone just a second to get logged in and we will get started momentarily. Hello, welcome to our first webinar of the summer. I'm just giving everyone a chance to log in and then we'll get started. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our first webinar for the incoming class of 2026. Um, some people are still trickling in, but the, it has slowed down a little bit, so we're going to get started. Um, my name is Melissa Grisolfi. I'm the Dean of the Commons. I'm really thrilled to get a chance to share some of um, what to expect this summer with all of you. Uh, before we get started, I want to let you know that we are going to record this webinar and we will post it on our website. And so um, if you know someone who wanted to attend and wasn't able to, or there's something that you want to um, revisit, you're welcome to do so. Um, so someone just wrote in the chat that they can't hear me. Um, if anyone else is also having that problem, if you could chime in as well. So we know if it's my end or your, okay. One other person at least can hear me. Okay, um, great. Thank you, thank you. You're all such great participants. So before we begin, um, and what is actually, I think a really exciting um, moment to share, I just wanna start by holding space by acknowledging that this has actually been a really hard day on top of a hard week, on top of, a hard number of events um, nationwide. And I know that um, it, it, I don't want to, I won't, I don't want anyone to feel like in our excitement and joy at welcoming you to Vanderbilt that we're not actually aware of the ways that many people are really having a rough time right now because of the, the events we're having in our nation. So I just wanted to hold that space to acknowledge that. And I also want to note that actually this is a, a, a time in everybody's lives that is both joy and excitement about what's to come and a little sadness um, about what's ending. And even today, uh, as we're having our first welcoming webinar for the incoming class of 2026, most people haven't even graduated yet. I know, I know you're still in your last weeks of classes. My children's last day of school is Friday. So we're in this liminal space between, um, between one phase and into the next. Um, and so today's webinar will actually be pretty short. Um, I'm gonna share a little bit about what to expect over the summer and I'm leaving lots and lots of time for you to ask questions that you have. Um, and I will also make sure you know that if there's questions that you have that come up after this webinar and there will be so many, I'm gonna make sure you know how to get those questions answered. So if you're just joining us, my name is Melissa Grisolfi. I'm the Dean of the Martha Rivers Ingram Commons. I'm also a professor here at Vanderbilt in the Department of Teaching and Learning. I've been a professor here since 2012. I've been Dean of the Commons since 2019. Um, so the class of 2026 will be my fourth class as Dean of Commons. I'm really excited to welcome you all. Whoops, we'll see if I can advance my slides. Um, so just so you know, this is the first, I want to let you know what kinds of communication you can expect from us over this summer. So this is our first summer webinar today, what to do over the summer to prepare for college and, and just what to know, uh, what to expect. We're also having a second webinar in July, and that webinar is going to be a little bit longer and will um, feature a lot of different campus partners. And we're going to dig into some of the details of what you need to know or you, what you might want to know about coming to Vanderbilt. Um, I also want to note that as questions come up about these things, there's a Q&A feature on the webinar. Just drop your questions in there. If there's something that we can answer quickly, like by sharing a link, we'll, we'll answer that. And uh, if it's something that I'm going to say, then I'll just wait till I'm finished sharing some information with you, and then I'll get to as many questions as we can. 
So as I said, first is a series of, set of webinars now and then again in July. I also highly recommend that everyone follows Res Colleges on Instagram. That's one of the main ways that we share information and highlights about what's going on. And this is true throughout the year, actually, not just for incoming students. Um, one thing that we've been doing on Instagram is called our informational series, and it's a series of short videos that are happening every week in May from current students about things to expect, experiences that they've had at Vanderbilt. They're short, quick videos, but I think they give you a little bit of a flavor about what life is like here. The other thing that we're doing also on Instagram is a little more substan uh, substantive, and these are Instagram live um, sessions some of we call them sessions, um, that happen every Monday at 3 p.m. Central. But of course, you'll be able to view them after if you're not available at that time. And each Instagram Live has a topic and will feature different campus partners. And so um, all of this information is available on our website. I'm going to show you how to find that in just a minute. But there's lots of times where you can drop in to get information um, and ask questions uh, as they come up. Um, boy, advancing the slide. So I want to just give you a little bit of a sense of what you're coming into, the community that you're joining. So hopefully all, uh, all of you know this, that all first year students live on the Martha Rivers Ingram Commons. That's what I'm the Dean of. And the Commons is um, Vanderbilt campus on um, part of Vanderbilt campus. Uh, that's Peabody campus. It's where Peabody College also is. There's 10 residence halls that all 1600 approximately 1,600 first-year students live in. Each uh, residence hall has a faculty head who lives in residence, and you'll get to see these folks in just a minute. Um, but that's where all first-year students live uh, for the whole, um, for this coming year. The first community that you'll form, or one of the first communities that you'll form is your hall community. So every single floor has an RA, a resident advisor, who, who's an upper division student, sophomore, junior, or senior, who is there to help uh, your hall form community and to help uh, connect you all and create, um, make sure that you're all safe. Um, each house also has a head RA, so that's a person who's been an RA for multiple years, who helps to really integrate all the RAs in the house and form house and helps with, uh, with those hall communities. A second kind of community that you have is, of course, the house level community. And as I mentioned, each house has a faculty head who lives in residence with their family, sometimes with their pets, and they don't all have pets. Um, and the faculty heads are one of the, um, I think the great joys of living on the commons, you get to know the faculty head of your house really well. Uh, one of the ways you get to know these folks is actually through a weekly study break that you have in every house. Um, it happens at, at the same time, once a week, it's usually around eight o'clock at night or nine o'clock at night. And it's just what it sounds like. It's just an informal chance to come together with the people in your house, say hi, get a snack um, and connect with faculty heads, with other residents. Um, these are actually open to everyone. So sometimes depending on you know, the snack, people go to more than one study break and that's great too, right? So it's just an opportunity to decompress and get to know other people. Um, the other way that you form community is actually by attending commons programming. And we have uh, so much that happens on the commons. There's never a lack of thing to do. I haven't done the count of how many events we did for the 2021-2022 academic year yet. Um, but for the previous year, just to give you a sense, we have hosted over 1,200 events between the activities that happened in the houses and the activities that happened on the commons. So there's lots of chances to get together with other people, learn something new, do something fun, or do something that you've never really had a chance to think about before. Um, on the commons, we also have a tradition that is called the commons cup. It is a fun um, and informal, friendly competition between all 10 houses. There's different categories of competitions. Um, so there's, there's competitions around intellect, there's competitions around, um, uh, or sorry, there's events around intellect, there's events around sustainability, there's events around sort of athletics, um, and there's a chance for, and participation. And so there's a way for houses to gain, to earn points. And at the end of the year, the house that earns the most points wins the, common, the Commons Cup. Uh, this year, West House won the Commons Cup, and last year they, they took that, uh, that title away from North House. And it's a really fun way that um, people can get together across the year in different activities with their house and engage in some friendly competition with the other houses. 
Um, and finally, another the, a final community that you have a chance to build on the Commons comes through a program called Vanderbilt Visions. And Visions is actually our extended orientation program. So it starts during Common VU, which I'm gonna talk about in just a minute, and then extends about 10 weeks into the semester. So each Visions group is led by a faculty member and an upper division student member. We call them VU Scepters. Um, and there are approximately 92 Visions groups every year. So that means that every single person is in a group of about 16 to 20 people that's led by a faculty member and an upper division student. Um, all of the Visions groups share a common syllabus, although each group looks a little bit different depending on who's leading it. Um, but the expe expectations of the Visions groups are all the same. So we wanna make sure you have opportunities to learn about the academic and social aspects of being here on campus at Vanderbilt. Um, we want to make sure that you're all learning about how to keep yourself safe and healthy as you're dealing with being, for most people, like on your own for the first time. We want to make sure that all first year students are learning about the wealth of resources that we have available to help you um, connect to other people, to, to be um, healthy, uh, to do your best in school. And then what's really most important to us is that you're learning how to be in community with other people, from your roommate, to your hall, to the people in your classes. Vanderbilt has every year the most diverse incoming class that we've ever had, um, which is to say that you are absolutely going to meet lots of people who have nothing in common with you, who come from a different state, a different country, who have a different story, who have a different background. And as you learn one another's stories, you learn how to be in community together. It's not a thing that happens without effort. And that's a huge part of what Visions helps you to do is to figure out how do we connect with people who, have so, who are so different from who I am. It's the joy and the challenge of being on the commons. Um, Visions groups meet once a week. This is a mandatory program, I forgot to say. So all students, it will appear on your course schedule. Um, it meets once a week for 50 minutes. And, um, and, and all of the vision sessions happen on, on Mondays and Tuesdays. So what should you be doing with your summer? So one thing I hope you're doing with your summer is um, relaxing and enjoying and having fun um, with the people that you've been with for the past you know, 18 or so years of your life. Um, but I also know there's a lot to prepare for. So the first thing I want you to do is to open the road to Vanderbilt. So you should have received um, uh, this magazine in, your, in the mail if you're a domestic student. If you're an international student, um, we don't send it, but you can access it online. and Everyone can access this online. Uh, the Road to Vanderbilt is our guide for the incoming class. It's everything that you need to know about preparing to move to Vanderbilt. The um, online website is gonna be always your most up-to-date source. So even if you received a physical copy of The Road, you definitely wanna bookmark this website because it has answers to practically any question that you could, that you could ask. Um, once you open The Road to Vanderbilt, I would like you to read The Road to Vanderbilt. So uh, there, it really is chock full of information. It, it's worth going through more than once. Um, and in particular, I want to call your attention to a really useful page, which is, I believe, page four. Uh, it's called What to Do and When to Do It. So essentially, that moving your life to Vanderbilt is a lot of little steps. It can seem really overwhelming, but the road to Vanderbilt outlines every single thing that you need to do and when you need to do it by. It also shares who you need to contact if something isn't going quite right. So just to give you a sense of the things that you should be doing in May this month, if you haven't already, bookmark um, vu.edu backslash class of 2026. That's where you're gonna find all the information that you need for um, incoming students. Students, if you haven't already, you're gonna to wanna to register your VUNet ID. That's gonna be the way that your Vanderbilt um, email gets activated. And that's where all correspondence is gonna to come to you. And you're gonna to need to check that email at least once a week, all summer long. Um, families, if you want to be in touch with Vanderbilt, you can submit your email address to vanderbilt.edu backslash families. And parents and fam the Office of Parents and Family Programs sends newsletters, sends all kinds of information. So it's a great way to stay informed um, about what's going on. I will say that uh, to parents and families that um, your students will be getting all kinds of emails from the university, all kinds of information. Um, a lot of the time we get parents calling our family hotline asking about something um, that 
definitely has been emailed to your student. So the first person you should ask if you're confused about something is the is your student because that's who all correspondence goes to. And if it's not available in their email, then please, please call, give us a call. Um, if you haven't started this already, make sure you're, you're getting your immunization information together because you're going to need to get that submitted. As I mentioned, students, you're going to want to start checking your, your um, email regularly. Um, and international students, um, you're going to check the email you use to apply for Vanderbilt admission. So that's a slight difference between domestic and international students. Um, your online housing application is due quite soon, it's due June 1st, so if you haven't started working on that, do so. There's a questionnaire that they ask you to fill out about who you are and what your preferences are. Um, you can submit your Commodore um, card photo, and then um, at the end of this month or early next month, you should get, um, <clears throat> excuse me, information about registration. Um, so be on the lookout for that and start to take a look at it. Um, the other thing you can do over the summer is read the campus reading. So all first year students, actually all new students to Vanderbilt, first year students and transfer students, receive a copy of the campus reading. This year's campus reading was chosen by uh, Provost Raver and she chose Creative People Must Be Stopped, Six Ways We Kill Innovation Without Even Trying. And it's written by Professor Dave Owens, who's actually a, a professor here at Vanderbilt. So we're really excited about this opportunity to get to connect with the author of the book in person, um, more than we usually are able to. So all students, all incoming students are asked to read this book. There is an essay about the book that will be due uh, August 15th. And you will get information about essay prompts to respond to and how to submit that essay uh, along with the book. And the book should be mailed in late June. International students, we did, sorry, I, I knew there was something I was gonna say. Uh, international students, we don't mail these books to you. We have found over the years that they don't, they often get lost. So digital copies of the books are available and you will be getting information soon about how to access your digital versions of those books. The other thing you can do for the, in this summer is to attend a Commodore launch. If one um, is happening in your area and we try to have them happen in as many places as we can. So um, this is an event hosted by the Vanderbilt Alumni Association. Um, and Commodore lunches are a long tradition at Vanderbilt. It's an opportunity to connect with people who are in your community who either used to go to Vanderbilt, currently go to Vanderbilt or about to go to Vanderbilt. Um, and, and always there's a member of the Vanderbilt faculty um, or administration who joins us an opportunity to connect and meet each other. I have been to many Commodore launches over the years. I always remember the students who I met at the launches and it's really nice to just to have that familiar face when you're on campus, especially when you don't know anyone yet. It's also great because you're meeting other people who live in your community who go to Vanderbilt and that's helpful in terms of rides and connections. So um, I highly recommend that you attend a Commodore launch if one's happening in your area. So I wanted to share a couple of FA answers to a couple of FAQs. Um, and then I'm going to open this up for all of your questions. And I can see we already have 15 questions. So we'll get to them in a minute. So first of all, people always have understandably a lot of questions about housing. Um, so um, you're going to want to bookmark and go to the housing portal. And I have it linked here. Um, so all first year, as I mentioned, all first year students live on the Martha Rivers Income Commons. You don't get to request which house you live in. I can promise you they're all great. Um, and the faculty heads are all really wonderful. Um, you're gonna submit a housing application by June 1st. As I mentioned, there's a questionnaire in there um, that you're, so you're gonna wanna give yourself some time. And then you should hear about your housing assignment around August 1st. Um, a second thing that people often have questions about is classes and registration. And this can be a little bit tricky. So first, I want to make sure that everyone knows that registration happens differently depending on which college you're enrolled in. So as you know, we have four undergraduate colleges, um, Blair School of Music, uh, the College of Arts and Sciences, sorry, the College of Arts and Science, I always say it wrong, uh, Peabody College, which is my college, College of Education, and um, School of Engineering. So depending on which of those colleges you are enrolled in, your registration will be a little bit different. And I say that because if you happen to know someone coming to Vanderbilt, but they're in a different college, they might be getting different information from you. It's not because we're confused. It's because the colleges work differently. Um, so you should be getting school-specific course registration packets, late May, early June. 
Um, and that, those packets are gonna answer, hopefully, all the questions you have, the exact dates of when you can register and how you register, information that you'll need about how to match the classes you wanna take with what you're meant to take, depending on your major, and then how to contact an advisor for assistance. I highly, highly, highly recommend, highly recommend that you contact that advisor before you register. Um, we do this for a living. Uh, you are not the first students that we've registered for classes, and you definitely wanna take advantage of all of the advice that you can get about what to register for. Um, and then a final FAQ that comes up a lot, it's like what dates and travel. Um, in fact, I thought I just saw that in the chat really briefly. So um, Wednesday, August 17th is when international students can move in and when we host um, internet and when international student orientation begins. This is required for all international students. If you are a domestic student who's living internationally, you have the option to attend and you'll get an email about that. Um, starting on Saturday, August 20th is when domestic students can move in and also when we begin common view orientation for all students. Um, you'll be given a slot, a time for when to move in. That time could be like first thing in the morning. So uh, you'll wanna think about your travel plans accordingly. I know that some people are flying in and so um, if you want to, if you like me, like to be an advanced planner, it's good to know that you may get an early move-in slot. Uh, for parents and families, we have a special orientation just for you that takes place Saturday, late afternoon, early evening. Um, so the formal sort of joint programming that we have available for students and parents and families will end around 5 p.m. on Saturday, at which point the students are going to be busy with their own orientation activities. And about then is when we begin parents and family orientation. So we invite everyone to say their goodbyes Saturday evening around 5. Um, and then I, and then you can go. You can attend parents and family orientation, enjoy a delicious dinner in Nashville if you want to stay over, but we don't have any events on Sunday for parents and family. Families. Um, you will most definitely have questions beyond tonight, and I want to make sure you know how to get those questions answered. So first and foremost, if you can't find information on the web, on the various sites that I've shared, you can always call the Parent and Family Helpline. Uh, that's 877-2736. Somebody is there to answer your questions. Um, there's also a, a Commodore Connection email series, as I mentioned, that parents and families can sign up for. Students, I highly encourage I highly uh, encourage you to check the Road to Vanderbilt, which I mentioned is online. There's also a new student hotline that you can call, um, and then of course there's the newly student newly admitted students platform that has a lot of resources for you all to check out. Um, I'll t parents and families, I want you to know that a lot of the time when parents call, we are asking you has has your child has your student tried to handle this first. Um, because once students are 18, there's a lot of information that, that we can't share with families anyway. So it's a good opportunity for students to learn to start to take charge of these things if you're not already. So for example, if you have a disability that you need an accommodation for, that's a good thing for a student to handle for themselves and start to learn how to use the systems that we have in place while there's lots of time to get help if you need it. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen um, so I can actually see the questions a little bit more easily. Um, and let me try to just take a brief moment um, to answer some quick questions. I'm gonna answer the ones that I know off the top of my head first. So one question was, um, are the students divided by major? And I'm guessing you're asking in terms of where they live. And the answer to that is no. So students are assigned randomly. Uh, to the houses and colleges, in fact, um, and that's also true of our visions group. So we, it's really important to us that students are having chances to connect to students who are in different colleges, different majors, different from different places. So we don't have any, um, any assignments on the commons or in housing that has anything to do with your major. Um, so let me see. There's a, a bunch of questions um, that are about registration, which I hope I've answered. So, and, and they were early on. So if there's new questions about registration, um, please go ahead and repaste them. Um, 
So how are the, so I, so another, I lots of questions about how visions is happening. So I just wanna make sure that that's really clear. So what will happen is um, your students will have a visions group appear on their course um, schedule. And that assignment is made based first of all on the students' class schedules, because obviously classes need to be the, um, those things are the anchor points in the, in the uh, schedule. And then we, we assign you to one of the 92 vision sessions around that. Um, then we also try really hard to make sure our visions groups are diverse. So we don't want an entire visions group to be inter engineering students. We don't want an entire visions group to be international students. Um, so it will be just a, as much as possible, a representation, uh, a, like a, a sample of the general, um, incoming class population. Um, so someone asked, this is an interesting question. Is there anything unique we have or are proud of um, with respect to Vanderbilt for diversity? And, um, and that's a great question. And I would say there's a lot of things that are unique to Vanderbilt that we're really proud of about that. Um, so first of all, um, Vanderbilt is what we call a PWI, that stands for a primar uh, primarily white institution. Um, but it is also the case that um, we now have more, a uh, higher percentage of non-white students, undergraduate students than white students. And so while there's more white students than any other racial or ethnic group, we also are no longer a majority white institution. That's just one measure of diversity. It's not a measure of inclusion. So let me tell you a little bit about why I think that's like an exciting first step and what we do from there. So diversity is important to even think about inclusion, but inclusion is not at all the same as having people from different places that who happen to occupy the same space. And so what we do through commons programming, through house programming and through visions is actually think a lot about what does it look like to create a space that everyone calls home, that you don't have to change who you are or tell a different kind of story about where you came from in order for this to feel like it's a place for you. That's not an easy thing to do. So it's not a facile, like we're great at inclusion kind of explanation, but I wanna share that it's something that we're really proud of and that it is a top priority for how we think about our programming, how we think about our professional development. So it is something that is, I think I'm really excited to share. Um, so there's a lot of questions that are coming in about registration, immunization, et cetera. So I highly recommend that you just go ahead and check vu.edu backslash class of 2026. If the answer isn't there, the office that can answer that question is linked there for you. So for example, I can't answer your questions about immunizations, but the Center for Student Health for sure can. So that will help you find the right person to answer those questions. Um, just scrolling down. Um, by the way, all students, so there's a question about the book. All students, no students have to buy the book. We buy the book for you, we send the book to you. So there's no expense about the book whatsoever, but everyone does need to read the book. So that's a requirement and everyone will need to submit the essay. It's not a very long essay. We asked for about 250 words, but all of the view sectors read the submitted essays before they meet before they meet the students in their visions group. So that's required um, for everyone. Um, uh, a question was, will we be able to talk to our advisor before registering for classes? Absolutely, yes, you will. And you should absolutely do that. Um, if you're having a hard time for some reason finding out who your advisor is, then um, you can always call the new student hotline and they can help you like find that person. But another thing to know is that every college has a Dean of Undergraduate Education. Um, and that's another good person. Find that person on the website, bookmark their name um, and send them an email because that's their job. Let's see. Um, there's a question here about whether you can rent a refrigerator. And I um, think that there is. Uh, we have a program, but I'm going to um, say we need to, I, if I can get an answer to that before we're off of this call, I will. Otherwise, um, we'll have to make sure that the, that the Office of Housing makes that really clear on their website. Okay. Um, so a couple of people are asking about roommate requests. So um, the Vanderbilt does a 
roommate matching program based on the questionnaires that you fill out. You can make a roommate request. Absolutely, uh, there's a space for you to make that request. Uh, there's no guarantee that, um, that those requests will necessarily be honored. And so uh, it's good to fill out that questionnaire for sure. Um, and then you should find out, as far as I know, you. I, so the Office of Housing is actually a separate office from the Office of Residential Colleges, which I know is a little bit confusing. Um, so I don't know when, if you find out about your roommate before you find out your room assignment or not, um, but that's a great question to ask housing. And it's actually probably in the student housing portal when you log on to submit your application. Um, As you all submit more questions, the question thing jumps. So that's why I keep having to scroll. Um, okay. Let me make this just a little bit bigger. So one question is how much time do you have to move your child in? That is a great question. So move in at Vanderbilt is amazing and a little overwhelming. So I always like everyone to be prepared. So you'll get a time slot and um, there's, it's very well orchestrated. So there'll be a place that you need to line up before your time slot. And then it will be a parade of cars in that time slot that is directed exactly to your student's dorm. And then we have um, almost a thousand upper division students who volunteer to be there for and what is called move crew. And so move crew will swoop in. And I really think that's the right word, swoop in, gather all of the belongings in your car and put them on carts, more than one, depending on how much you have, and, and help you take everything up to your room. So the amount of time that the car is there in front of the dorm is very short. We actually managed to move everyone in between uh, 7 a.m. and noon. So your car is there for a very short amount of time, but then there's a, so then we suggest that the student immediately go up to the room. And if, if you're students, if you're bringing a family member, that if, if you're bringing more than one family member, someone who's not driving could come up to your room as well and help you start to unpack. And then the driver can um, hightail it out of there if they want, or there's designated parking and you can park and then come back. We do not kick you out of that dorm room. So you can be there as long as you want. My mom always wanted to make our beds when we moved into a new place, she actually did this like as an adult when I bought a new house. So if, you know, whatever your tradition is, um, we don't kick you out of there. So, um, but the, the time that you have to sort of unload your car is pretty quick, but that's why we have a whole move crew there to help you. Um, let me, oh, boy, the scrolling situation is kind of annoying. Um, so, I recommend somebody asked how local accommodations are for moving for moving in. I recommend that you go ahead and try to find a hotel if you're staying overnight as soon as you can. Um, the, the hotels around Vanderbilt get booked up. However, if you have a car, um, top tip is to just look a little bit further away. So if you are um, if you just go 10 minutes south, there's a, a, a city called Brentwood which is literally a direct shot up, six, uh, up the major interstate that goes by Vanderbilt called 65. And so those ho hotels are perfectly nice, really easy um, to get in and maybe aren't quite as booked up as the hotels that are right around Vanderbilt. As you may know, Nashville is a major tourist destination. And so it's not just Vanderbilt families who are booking those hotels, um, especially in the summer. So I recommend that you try to take a look at that, those hotel reservations as soon as you can. Um, the move-in slots are assigned um, by the Office of Housing and Residential Experience. And um, those slots will be based on, um, as far as I know, they're, they're based on their desire to try to like balance out. So like different families, so they don't have too many people in at a time. Um, if you have a constraint, a time constraint, then you should absolutely reach out to the Office of Housing and they will try their best to accommodate you. Um, okay, freshmen cannot bring a car. I've seen that happen, that question come up a couple of times. So um, no, freshmen, first year students um, are not allowed to bring a car onto campus. You'll see we have really, really limited parking. I see a lot of questions in here about vaccines and registration. So I just wanna say, I'm not, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, absolutely check um, the um, road to Vanderbilt. And if, if, if the answer is not in there for you, please call the helpline and we will help you there. 
Um, someone asked about International Move-In Day and if it's kind of the same festive atmosphere as um, common view orientation, it's a little bit different. Uh, so international students arrive like not all at one time the way, they, the way um, that they do for move-in. So what we try to do for international students is have a welcome at the airport. Um, because especially if you've flown here and you're like on an 18 hour flight, you're exhausted, you're tired, like, wow, this is a new place I've never been before. So, so we have um, Vanderbilt represent, representatives at the airport who are meeting flights, um, directing students to cars. We don't have an on-campus move-in um, that's the same way, but right away we have a welcome dinner for international students. We have um, usually that same night, um, a games night with faculty heads. And so we, we, we don't want anyone to just be in their rooms by themselves. So we launch right away as soon as people get here, which actually can be tiring if you've just gotten off an 18 hour flight. Um, let me see. Um, so, uh, someone at, said that they hadn't gotten a copy of the Road to Vanderbilt. So again, I just wanna make sure cause I don't know where anyone lives that. So we only mail those domestically. If you haven't received one, um, then um, I'm gonna ask um, Natalie to just put into the chat the email address that you should contact if you, if you haven't received a Road to Vanderbilt. Um, so you should, that should be coming up. There you go, commons at vanderbilt.edu and we will make sure that you get one. Um, housing, we'll talk about, um, well, has information about room size, what you can bring. The rooms are not all the same size. So you could be in a single, a double or a triple. And those rooms are different sizes depending on the house you're in and even like where the room is in the house, right? And so um, they have a, on the um, housing website, they have a list of things that they recommend you bring um, and information about the size of the beds, et cetera. Um, but, you know, it's not big. So I wouldn't bring everything that you love in the world, um, especially until you really see the room for yourself. So if you know, you're most likely going to be sharing space with at least one other person. Um, so a couple of people have asked about, oh, someone asked about orientation and if it's in person. So again, the orientation dates are um, August 17th for international students, August 20th for domestic students. Um, and it is definitely in person. I mean, unless, as of the moment, um, I got really used to during the pandemic saying what we know now is, um, and so I'll say that again, as of the moment, um, the, the orientation will be in person and um, we will have a lot of things happening if that changes. We do not have any plans currently for that to change. Uh, there are no suites in the commons at all. Um, that is something that happens in some residence halls once you're on main campus. Um, so a couple of people have asked about early move-in. In general, the Office of Housing and Residential Life does not um, allow students to move in early. There are a couple of exceptions to that. Um, if you happen to be involved in a program that has early move-in, then of course that you get to move in early. Um, so ROTC, uh, I believe moves in early. There is a media program that Vanderbilt has that has an early move-in. Some student athletes move in early. It depends on when your sport is. Um, and certainly your team would be communicating that to you. Um, if you have an international student, you're trying to arrange international travel, um, and trying to find a place for students that is a different issue, please go ahead um, and email commons at vanderbilt.edu if, you're, if, if, if that's a problem and we will um, figure out what can happen for that student. Um, okay. So a couple of questions about when you get to declare your major, can you switch majors, et cetera. So, um, in the college, this is one of those examples of things that works differently in the different colleges. So Peabody, Engineering, and Blair students come in with a major. The College of Arts and Science has a liberal arts model and students do not declare their major until their sophomore year. So all first year students who are in the College of Arts and Science have a general um, uh, advisor in the office that's called CASPAR, which stands for something. And for the next webinar, I'll know what it is. Um, because we want students, like the idea is that students will explore the liberal core, especially in their first year. 
Um, however, those like all of the advisors, no matter which college you're in, can tell you and will help you know, well, what should I take based on what my interests are, what I think I might be aiming for. Um, people do have more than one major across colleges all the time. It's not a problem. You can have uh, so HOD, which is um, Human Organizational Development, which is a Peabody major, and MHS, which is Medicine, Health, and Society, those are two popular majors. Sometimes people do them together. They're in two totally different schools. That's not a problem at all. Um, sometimes the school that you're admitted to does impact which, and or your major does impact which classes you can get first off as a first semester um, student, but um, overall, you can take classes in any of the colleges, as long as, you know, different classes have prerequisites, of course. Um, so first year students do have the last registration period. And um, that can be a little bit, you know, frustrating at first, because it could be that some of the classes that you want are just not available. So I want to let everyone know that in advance and explain why that happens. So first year students have eight semesters to get the classes that they need to take. Um, first semester seniors have two semesters to get the classes that they need to take. So we prioritize in reverse order the students who have the least amount of time to complete their requirements. Uh, that maybe sounds a little more difficult than it is though, because as you might imagine, seniors are not generally taking introductory level courses, right? So all of the colleges have courses that are at different levels. They're intended for students who have different amounts of experience at the university. So you may, as a first year student, you may not get all the classes that you want. You will, we, we definitely make sure that students get all the classes that they need. So I, it's not a thing to worry about um, in terms of like, oh no, I'm not gonna be able to graduate because I didn't get this section of this class the first semester of my freshman year. That's, that's definitely not gonna be a problem, but it is a good idea to look for multiple classes that you think would be interesting uh, and because you, you might not get the first, the first classes that you select. Um, let's see. all the dorms are air conditioned? That's a great and important question. Um, <laughs> since we're in Nashville, it's gonna be hot, um, likely on move-in just so everybody knows, uh, usually August is a really hot time in Nashville and, um, and our, our buildings are absolutely air conditioned. Um, there are not dorm room tours available, although stay tuned for the summer series because we are trying to uh, include some um, videos of like in general what and the interior of a, a residence room of, of, of a room looks like actually um, uh, and there is a video about that from a couple of years ago as well so we'll try to get that video linked onto our website if it's not already um, okay So there's a bunch of questions here about registration and, um, and switching majors, et cetera. How can you find your advisor? So if, so all, all of this information in terms of finding your advisor should be in your information registration packet. If you have not received a registration packet or I saw one person said, actually, I'm, I'm not sure if we will get it because we're out of town, then you absolutely can email the Dean of Undergraduate Education for your college and say, hey, I didn't get my registration packet. Is there a way I can access it online or can it be resent to me? Um, we, I know, cause we mail the campus reading every year and inevitably it doesn't reach some people. We do not know why. Um, and so reach out if you haven't received it, but don't panic if you haven't gotten it yet. Um, I don't know if registration packets have been mailed yet, but they're not even expected to be mailed until late May, early June. So there's no problem if you haven't received one yet. Um, so, um, so a lot of people are also asking about uh, roommates. So I will just say that one more time. So Vanderbilt, does not, um, so Vanderbilt 
pairs roommates um, based on the, the survey that you fill out in the housing application. However, you also can request a roommate. We don't guarantee um, that roommate requests, or I will say they don't, I have nothing to do with this. O'Hare does not guarantee that roommate requests will be honored, but you absolutely can make that request. Um, and you should find out about your roommates, I mean, obviously this summer. Um, and, and, and when you do find out who your roommate is, you will get their contact information so you can connect with them. There was another question that came up that I wanted to, um, Students absolutely can keep bikes on campus. Yes, um, motorized scooters is a lot less common. Actually, um, it's not that big of a campus, and so you know, so so the Commons is on one edge of campus, and um, sort of the the most opposite edge from here, I would say, is Zeppos College, um, and I can walk from my house on the Commons to Zeppos College in fifteen minutes, and so. Um, you do not need a bike if you don't have one or want one, um, but you absolutely can have one. There's bikes, there's bike racks all over campus. If you are going to bring a bike, you definitely want to invest in a good bike lock. Um, so don't, don't, don't be a victim of bike stealing. Um, so make sure you have that. Um, some students also use skateboards if they want to. There's, uh, we don't generally have scooters on campus, although occasionally they appear. Um, a couple of people are asking about COVID procedures. So I haven't heard what the COVID procedures are for this coming year. I can tell you what we've done in the past. Um, so, so I think, I don't know how many of you know this, but um, uh, last year, so the 2020-2021 academic year, we had all students back in person from the beginning. And um, that was, we were one of the only institution, peer, of our peer institutions that did that from the beginning. And it was a big undertaking because at the time, if you recall um, the vaccine, uh, there was no vaccine available. <laughs> it's like, what year are we in? There was no vaccine available. We didn't really know very much about transmission. And so our obligation is if we're bringing students to campus to keep people safe. And so we had an extraordinary isolation, um, set of isolation procedures where we um, housed students separately, we provided food, we provided transport, and we made sure everyone was, was quarantining safely. Um, this past year, when students were uh, vaccinated, um, we were able to lighten up on a lot of those um, guidelines because people were generally not transmitting COVID to one another. Um, there's a COVID dashboard if you're interested in looking at it. Our numbers were exceptionally low uh, last year. If a student was positive, they were um, uh, taken to uh, quarantine housing. Um, but of course, the, as the CDC changes their quarantine rules, we also respond accordingly. So I don't know what our isolation policies will be ne next year. Um, I know that what, what we will do will follow the CDC guidelines. We also have our own internal um, panel of true experts, right? So the Vanderbilt Vaccine Project is part of what started, you know, has helped contribute to the development of the COVID vaccine. So we are in really good hands here in our partnership with Vanderbilt Medical Center. Um, so, so there are people who are constantly um, consulting CDC guidelines, what we know from recent research, the, the community transmission levels and making decisions. So um, once those guidelines have been um, established for next year, they'll get posted on our um, health and safety website and you can, you can uh, consult those at any time. It's weird to talk to you all without, getting able, without being able to see you. Um, so there's a couple of questions about health insurance. This comes up every single year. And so uh, this is, there's lots of information available about this. So if you go to vu.edu backslash class of 2026, you can find information about student health insurance and waiving health insurance if you want to waive it. So you're not obligated to use Vanderbilt Health. Um, you do have to complete a waiver. There's a deadline for that. And I'm sorry, I don't know that deadline off the top of my head, but I do think it is, I think it's June. Um, so please go ahead and check bu.edu backslash class of 2026, and they'll give you the deadline and a link um, to submit that waiver if you want to waive Vanderbilt Health. Um, there are lots of rules about what you can and cannot have in your dorm room, by the way. So I just wanted, so there's been lots of questions about that. 
absolutely consult O'Hare's website. I'm not even going to say what the rules are because I always get them wrong and forget half of them. So go to the source um, and they will tell you what you can and cannot have. Um, all rooms definitely have windows. That's an easy one for me to answer. Um, there's a couple of questions about like what kind of computer you should have. Uh, as far as I know, there are no specific guidelines about that, but that's a great question um, to ask for your for students to ask their advisors um, as soon as they are assigned. If you are like on the brink of a sale and you were thinking of making a purchase, you could absolutely email um, the undergraduate dean of the college that you were accepted to. If you think, you know, so the person who asked this question was about um, was asking specifically about engineering. Um, so if you think there's a reason there might be something specific, you could ask them. Generally, we're really, really good at telling people specifically th specific things that they have to have. So uh, in Peabody, I know it does not matter what kind of computer you have. Um, so, but go ahead, if, you, if there's a timely reason you need to get this answer before you get your assignment, your um, advisor assigned, you can absolutely reach out. Um, so actually there's a question about like, are there things, random things that you really should bring or random things that you people bring and you don't need? That is a great, great question. And, um, you know, I don't, I'm going to ask um, our team to see if we can do a crowdsourcing on that one with current students, because they're definitely going to be the ones who know the answers to those. Um, okay. Um, June 1st is the housing application deadline. Someone asked about that. I believe that's also when you would do a roommate request, but I don't know for a fact. So go ahead. Any question that you have about housing, that housing portal is, is the place to go. It's a lot. There's a lot of information on there, I know, but um, it is unlikely that you are coming up with a question that someone hasn't asked before. So I would, I, I recommend that you spend some time on that website and click around and see um, what information is there uh, because they will definitely share it, share with you. Um, so someone has a question about AP credits and registering for classes. That is exactly the kind of question to ask your um, advisor once they've been assigned. Um, Sorry, I'm just continuing to scroll. I'm sure it looks really weird to watch me read these questions. Um, so someone asked, can you come and visit the school for a tour? So Vanderbilt has an open campus. You can come here anytime. Any of you can come and wander around. If you would like to schedule a tour, you, do, you would do that through the Office of Admissions and um, they do tours all year round. Um, so you would just need to go to the Office of Admissions and find out when they're doing tours and if you can get one. But um, you do not need to be in a tour to visit the campus. Um, if you do go on a tour, of course, you will be able to go into some buildings. But if you're here on your own, you can wander around. Um, two years ago, uh, there was a family here just visiting, checking it out. And um, my husband was in the backyard um, with the kids. And um, they happened to stop and chat and they had this long extended conversation. And then the next summer I was at a summer center and I wasn't home. My husband doesn't even work for Vanderbilt. But so um, the next summer I was at a, at a Commodore launch and the family came up to me and said, I know we didn't meet you, but we met your whole family. And, you know, it was so great to get to just, you know, talk to someone on campus. And so really it is an open campus. You are welcome. Um, and but there are uh, actually there's 15, there's 16 families, including mine, who live on campus. Um, so there's lots of people who are here a lot of the time, in addition to the actual official people like in admissions that can run tours. Um, all dorms do have a common kitchen, just so you know. Um, so uh, the kitchens are stocked with some basic, basic cooking supplies, but there's also a fridge and there's a microwave and a sink, so people can absolutely use those. Um, you have to clean up after yourself, which is this, the topic of many, many emails every year, um, but you can absolutely use that. Um, students, another person is asking how you um, travel outside of the university. So that's a great question since people don't have cars. So if you haven't been to the campus, 
Vanderbilt is in the middle of the city. So it is a two minute walk to get to CVS. It is, you know, a, a five minute walk in the other direction to get to Hillsborough Village. There's a grocery store that's walkable. Maybe that's a 15 minute walk. So there's a lot of walkability. But if you, for example, needed to get to the airport or if you, you know, wanted to go see a Predators game, um, there's, you know, like everywhere else, we have Uber and Lyft, which is what most students use. We also have um, public transportation. It's not the greatest public transportation, but we do have public transportation in Nashville. Um, it's a bus system and um, students ride for free with their IDs. And so predators in particular, as an example, like you can just take a bus directly downtown to Broadway um, if you wanted to do that. So that's mostly how people, um, if they're going somewhere that's not walkable, they usually use a car service or public transportation. And you'll see, and that's very common. In fact, students um, often ride share, right? So if you're, especially like before a break, like there's not that many times that people fly out. So you often see a group of like four students piling into a car with all their luggage. Um, and that's a really common thing for people to do. Um, I notice we're coming up on time and I just wanna make sure that there's nothing really pressing. Um, someone asked about, I just saw in the chat, if, um, if the residence halls are closed during breaks. So um, during Thanksgiving break, uh, so students always have to register to stay. Um, so it's not just assumed that people are, are in residence, but during Thanksgiving break, the residence halls are open. Um, and then during the winter break as well, you can register to stay in spring break. I'll also say that if you are someone who um, can't get home because it's too far, but you don't want to stay on campus. We have a really, really neat program at Vanderbilt called um, Alternative Fall Break and Alternative Spring Break, which are um, little mini trips that are almost always service related to different places that students can take, like with other students at Vanderbilt. And um, you have to pay for that, but you can cover, you can apply for additional funding if you qualify. Um, through um, a fund called Opportunity Vanderbilt, and you could apply um, for funds to cover alternative fall break or alternative spring break. So you can stay on campus, but there's also lots of things to do if you didn't want to stay on campus, but you can't make it home. And we have a lot of students, international students, for whom the flight would just be too long to make it home for a short break, or students whose parents are going to be out of town. So we definitely have students who stay on campus during the breaks. All right. Um, oh, quick, quick question, uh, dining and meal money. So I, so I'll give you a, a sampler, um, but this is also an advertisement for the webinar in July because um, someone from the Office of Dining will be here. Um, so I'll just say really, really quickly that all students have a 21 meal plan, meal plan for 21 meals per week. Um, and those meals, they're called meal swipes and they can be used at any of the dining halls anywhere on Vanderbilt campus. Um, and so some of the dining halls are unlimited, all you can eat. Um, the commons is actually, hasn't been historically, but I heard a rumor that we were about to be. Um, but there are, um, there are places to eat everywhere on campus and they all, you can use your meal swipes on all of them. You also, if you put money on your card, you can use that card at participating um, restaurants in town. Um, and that's called Commodore Cash that you can put on your card and you can, you can tap um, at lots of restaurants around town. So um, there's, there's no lack of food or no, no lack of places um, to find things to eat. So I can see that there are more questions coming in. So I haven't had a chance uh, to answer them all. So two things, one is um, please join us again in July and check out the other um, resources that I've shared tonight. If there's something that you urgently need to know, um, please feel free to reach out. You can email us at commons at vanderbilt.edu. Students can call the new student hotline. Um, parents and families, as I mentioned, uh, you can call the parent and family hotline. So there's a lot of places um, to come and find help if you need it. And I've lost my Zoom screen in the midst of all of this. Um, so with that, I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I, you know, I wish I could see you all in person. That would be joyful. Um, 
But in the meantime, I'm looking forward to seeing you all in person uh, when you arrive in August. Um, and don't hesitate to reach out if you have any other questions. Uh, one more time, this webinar has been, uh, we've been, we've been recording it. It will get posted to our website um, and you can, and anyone can share the link. It will take a couple of days because it has to get, go through some fancy thing at YouTube, but it will appear on our website and you can check it out at any time. Have a wonderful evening. I am looking forward to meeting you all in person soon. Bye.